but that that has to be done by you to make sure that she's on their scapula and not on her arm. Yeah. No, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, remind me in lab and I'll show you all. Once, once you feel it, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. PNF. This is another treatment. There's a lot more to this. I'm going to give you the down and dirty. Okay. All right. This was done by Dr. Cabot. And he said, we don't move in planes. pattern there's an extensor pattern there's a lot more stuff there's a lot of reciprocal stuff there's a lot I'm just not going into it okay but here's what I want you to know everybody sit in your car as the driver okay just pretend you're there okay using your right hand get your seat belt okay now buckle it in that is pattern one flexor pattern one and coming over here to buckle it in. Yes. Okay. Reach farther up for your seatbelt. <laughs> Don't come here. Come up here. <laughs> okay. So extension. This is diagonal two. It starts in extension. Flexion. All right. Diagonal one goes in flexion. And comes to extension. Can you please notice how we are rotating as we go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very busy thing. Okay. Those of you remembering way back in the day where you had pants that buttoned on the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes way more sense. So this side would be in a flexor pattern. Go that basically what you do is you move through the entire pattern and you resist the whole way. And as you go, you know, you're going to be strengthening the flexors or the proximal muscles and you're going to be working toward the distal ones. Okay, so you're resisting the whole pattern motion. But it makes sense because, okay, putting my groceries away, putting stuff in the pantry, do I do like this? No. Huh. What am I doing? You're turning and moving. All right. I gotta put that over here and if I empty out the dishwasher and I'm putting stuff and getting stuff here, none of it's in a straight line. Okay, and that's what PNF's about. All right? There's way, way, way more to it. We're going with this. Okay, normal motor uh, developments in a cephalocaudal and proximal and distal direction. Again, not to. Early movement patterns are based on what? Not new. Motor behavior is orderly sequence of total movement patterns and postures. Really, that's not new. We, we've not said it that way, but we're saying we don't do things you know, this and this and this. And growth is in a rhythmical cyclical pattern of flexion and extension. It is a spiral. Right. We do not develop this way. Like if we're looking at it on a, on a graph, I learn this skill and I go up this I learn this scale and go up this much, right? We don't we don't do a one for one. Oops. We don't do a one for one growth. Right. 
It's not linear. It's not. Okay. But P and F says we do it this way. Okay. Where you have an overlay. Right. Okay. You with me? <coughs> it's an orderly sequence. We know what's coming next. It's not linear, but we know what's coming next, right? Establishing the balance between the agonist and the antagonist. Does that sound new? It's dependent on motor learning. Activities, along with you know the strengthening of the patterns and stuff, and repetition is what improves function. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't we said that? show you what to do. Mm -hmm. That's right. you, you don't do it. Right? You do it. No, you think you are. <laughs> so you're, you're getting all kinds of feedback. Okay? I love this. Clear, well modulated voice. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. That doesn't really apply to any type of sports practice. No. But, you know, when you're working with somebody, and, and I'm, I'm telling you this is what's going to happen, when you're working with your patients, and this is where the AD deduction stuff comes into place. You're working with your stroke patient and they're starting to get some motion back. Okay, pure flexion is very difficult. Okay, what you're gonna get is this kind of thing. All right, they're gonna be picking up stuff like this and I'm like, mm -mm -mm, mm -mm, no chicken wings. We are, we are not at the kernel, so we're not having chicken wings today. Okay, I want you to work on, so that tells me a couple of things. I need to work some more on the shoulder stuff, but I also need to work more on tricep strengthening because I want, I want pure flexion, not adduction. But, yeah. Yes, yes. And that will come in, which is why you may see the, the A deduction like that we're talking about. So you will get this kind of motion, and, and I'm going to have to say, okay, no, no, no. All right, this is what we need to do. I may pull out a mirror. I want you to look in the mirror, and let's see how we can do it. I'm going to work on doing some strengthening of stuff where there's some, some off balance. You know, it, it, but I'm going to give them feedback the whole way is this is why I'm doing this. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes. And just just pretend, just just see your arm coming straight up. Okay, I'm gonna let them do some of that thinking. All right. Visual stuff, tactile input, and practice. Anything new there? NDT. NDT is the Bobass. Okay. He was a physician. She was a physical therapist. And um, these ice videos you've been watching, because I know you've been watching. Yes. 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 <laughs> Jan Davis trained under the Bobass, okay? And it is a facilitation inhibition te technique. That it, and again, it looks at your hand placement, weight bearing on the effective side, trunk rotation does what? Decreases tone. Helps break up tone, okay? Scapular protraction is going to do what? Yeah, decrease tone and bring them out of pattern, right? Because what do we know about 
our scapula when we get it elevates and retracts. And what can I do? <laughs> Not much. Right? Okay. Facilitation of slow controlled motion. Now this is my, hmm, I know why they do that. I get that. But it will take her 45 minutes to transfer somebody. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Because as soon as she feels something abnormal, if you will, she stops, gives, gives feedback, um, tries to get them back into place. With the whole the whole thought being, the process being, and I, and, and I understand this, if you don't know what normal feels like, how can you do it right? So as soon as there's like a, a, a shift of tone or a shift of um, um, weight bearing or whatever to, to something that's not typical normal, if you will, she'll stop. Okay, let's take you back to where we are and try to get, and I'm <coughs> kidding, I kid you not, true bow, bow bad stuff will take you 45 minutes to transfer anybody. Yeah, I ain't got that kind of time. No, it's not. And, and this, it, it really is nice because you'll hear the patients go, oh, okay, now I get it, thank you, which is great. But how do you bill for 45 minutes to get the patient in and out of bed? Yeah. So that's what you're doing. <clears throat> this, is where, this is where you're going to pull in some of your feedback stuff, you know, saying, okay, now I feel you tightening up, we need to, you know. So she goes in a slow motion because we already, we know that they, for them to feel it, but we also know that slower motion does what? Facilitates or inhibits? Slow motion inhibits, right? Because a quick stretch will increase tone and a long, slow stretch will So that's gonna keep our, we're trying to normalize tone here. Proper positioning. I am sure every every single person that y'all saw on your clinical was sitting up at 90-99 in their chair with their feet on matching foot rests and if you flip them this way it might be 90-90. Okay. <laughs> I turn my head. Which again, thinking in proper positioning, what kind of feedback are you getting? Okay. And incorporating the upper extremity into activities way too easy for us to learn to do things one-handed. Okay, it's not a bad thing. I'm going to do both. We're going to learn how to do things one-handed, but we're going to work on doing things with two hands. <coughs> we're going to incorporate that arm back into two activities. So we're kind of doing two things at the same time. Does that make sense? You know, I may teach you a down and dirty way to get dressed real quick like while we're still working on normalizing tone and getting more motion and that kind of thing because I want you to be able to take care of yourself here while we're working on this. Does that make sense? Okay. You with me so far? Mm -hmm. Whose brain's getting full? By the bow bass, it's both sides of the body. Symmetry and alignment. Heard that before? Mm -hmm. Okay. Start where? Your Anterior pelvic hip, right? Look at the quality of the motion. You okay back there? I'm good. Okay. Quality of the motion. Look at associated. See, this is where stuff like um I've told you, if you're working with somebody who has oral motor control problems, sometimes you'll see an increase in drool when they're working really hard. That's good. Because I know they're working hard. Okay. Because none of us do this, right? Well, not so much that as this one. When you're working really hard on something, like fine motor stuff, 